Thanks for joining us. Um, you're here with What's the Form of One on Books. I'm Ruth Morrison, and this is... Troy Johnson. Okay. Now, I, did, I know his name. I just wanted him to say his own name. <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, we're going to be talking about a lot of things today, more on the technical side, but it definitely um, affects you when you're buying books online. So, you're going to want to pay attention. So, let's go. Let's get started. Um, I've gonna, I'm going to talk about Amazon. And uh, Amazon, as most people know, are, is the largest um, online retailer of books. Mm -hmm. um, many of us think of it as just a bookstore, but it's obviously a lot more than just a bookstore. Uh, they are far and away the largest online retailer. Uh, almost 50% of what is purchased online, one out of every two dollars, spent online goes to Amazon. Half? half almost, well, 52%, it, it, that's more than half. Yeah, it's, uh, it's actually approaching 50%. The last figure I read was about 43%. Okay. But it's effectively half, and, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's growing. Mm -hmm. um, Amazon is growing faster. Um, it's growing to the point where people have stopped actually price shopping. And, in other words, other retailers who have websites selling their own products are no longer able to do so because people have been trained to go directly to Amazon. And so if you're a retailer who now has to sell through Amazon, what happens is you have to raise prices in order to compensate for what you, you make. Um, Amazon's dominance in the retail space affects a wide variety. It affects the entire infrastructure of the economy. And as a seller of books on the web, as someone who specializes in niche of books written by or about African Americans, uh, the impact has been quite severe. Mm, yes. um, some people suggest that you know I may be. I'm actually calling for a boycott of Amazon's bookstore, or I'm looking into that idea. And the reason I'm doing it is because Amazon dominates the space, so so they own Black Books Online. If a, well, you know what? Actually, um, I don't mean to cut you off, sure. but. Um, in terms of the ownership, I, I, when it comes to books, I tend to think that Amazon really owns the book sector, if you will, online, um, pretty much. Um, when you think about it, I mean, and not only just online, but even in um, retail, offline, they put Borders out of business, oh, you know, some years back. And um, Barnes & Nobles is barely hanging on. Yeah, you know? I mean, you know, in terms of the physical bookstores, we, um, but even with their own websites, you yeah. know, when people are looking for books, they generally don't go to barnesandnoble.com to buy books. I mean, they do, but Amazon is usually the first place that people go. Yeah, and increasingly, Barnes and Nobles is used as a, a show, show place for books. Mm -hmm. In other words, you go there, see what you want, and then some people scan the barcode right in Barnes and Noble and order the books with the Amazon app. Wow. Now, Amazon originally suggested that bookstores were antiquated and out of date, but today Amazon is the fifth largest physical bookstore chain. So Amazon, if they expand at the rate they are, they may be the top physical bookstore owner. And um, this is um, their 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 power in this space um, allows them to impact prices, impact what's sold impact how much how much something costs that is sold. Mm -hmm. So when I said Amazon was 43% of all online retail, they're at least two-thirds of all books sold. Right. And again, that is a position, by being in that position, they can dictate and, and do dictate to publishers what books are, what, what the discount rate is that they get. So in other words, if I was to sell a book, I would get 40 to 45 percent off retail. Amazon could get 50, 55, 60 percent off retail. In addition to those st steep discounts from the wholesaler, they can sell books at a loss. So, which they do, of course. Right. And so, yeah, by they because they have been hyped so Just much the on Wall Street, they get. A tremendous their, their stock price is a thousand dollars a share. I know, I saw the other Jeff day. Jeff Bezos at one point was the richest person on earth, the richest person that ever walked 
the planet. Well, he just did this week. Yeah. Um, with um, he, you know, because Bill Gates was the number one person, the richest person in the world, and um, Bezos. Um, I don't know what his number was, but now this past week, he supplanted um, um, Bill Gates. Sure. So his wealth. So they'll, they'll probably go back and forth between whatever Am Amazon does, you know, in terms of their their stock um, price, and also with um, Microsoft. Yeah. So yeah, Jeff Bezos' net worth is approximately ninety billion. Mm -hmm. He may be the first person to be worth twelve figures, a hundred billion dollars. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's unimaginable. Right. But um, how does this affect our books? Right. books written by about black folks. So the often many authors will argue, well, Amazon has provided a platform for me to sell books, and they published books for me where mainstream publishers didn't do that. And the problem with that is not that Amazon, you can, any, you can publish books without Amazon, but the mentality is that you have to go through Amazon in order to do this. But it also diminishes the role of the publisher not just the large, big five New York uh, mainstream publishers, mm -hmm. but independent publishers as well. They actually, they do serve as gatekeepers, but they maintain a minimum level of quality. So on one hand, and they pay authors. So if I have a book that I want to publish and um, some publisher wants to publish it, they pay me for that. They pay me for that. Mm -hmm. There are some independent publishers who are more mission-driven, and they may publish a book because they feel it's important, where a mainstream publisher will publish a book because they believe they can profit from it. Right, exactly. But in both cases, they're looking to introduce a quality product. Amazon, on the other hand, is not a publisher in that sense. You pay them to have your book published, not unlike the vanity presses before the digital revolution. Mm -hmm. So Amazon where a, a traditional publisher invests in your work, Amazon is just taking your money. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they'll publish anybody that will give them money. And uh, what has happened is almost anybody who will pay Amazon can have a book. It means that the market is flooded with books, but it also means that there's increased pressure on publishers to publish only things that will generate revenue. In other words, publishers are less likely to take um, a risk on a book. And what that means in a black community is they're less likely to take a risk on our books. Right. But you know what? Um, but the fact that there are more books, isn't that a good thing? Well, here, here's the thing. It is a good thing in one sense in that one barrier to entry to the marketplace um, has been removed. So there are are going to be some books that would have been tr rejected in the traditional model that might do well, that might be qual a quality book. Exactly. And we saw that with um, the emergence of writers like uh, Terry McMillan or Elin Harris, mm -hmm. who literally got and put books in the back of their trunk and sold them on their own and built their own audience. Um, but th that happens anyway when you go to a traditional publisher that for, for the most part, you really do have to get out there and market your books because they may pay you to write the book, but you don't get a big marketing budget to go out and market the books. Uh, and yeah. now, and also, the, the, the traditional publisher also wants you to have your own platform, if you will, Well, that's, that's in terms of how those books are going to get out there. Right, so that's part of this whole dynamic. So mm -hmm. in other words, their publishers are more risk adverse and they are looking for authors not to only be uh, skilled writers, they have to be skilled marketers, marketers with exactly. the platform. And so often those two skills don't go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. Most of the time they don't. But the other thing that has happened is as Amazon's dominance has increased, there are fewer booksellers. So in the 90s, there were over there were almost 7,000 independent booksellers. Right. Today, that number is closer to 2,000. In the black space, there were several hundred books, black-owned bookstores, independents. Mm -hmm. Today, there are less than 100, and most of those are struggling for survival. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? It means that there is no one, and the same is true online, by the way. Right. Um, you know, my site, AOBC.com, mm -hmm. 
is dominant in that space, but I'm dominant in a space that has very few competitors. So we're in a position now where, yes, there are probably more books published by black people than ever before, but there's no one to sift through all of these books. There's no one to say, all right, I've been introduced to these numbers of authors. That one's really good. This one is good. This one will resonate with my audience. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Deborah down the street will definitely like this book. So there's no one to actually sell these books. And what we have is an environment where everybody and their mother has a book and are screaming, buy my book, buy my book, buy my book. And there are no booksellers to help the reader determine which of all of these books are worth reading. But, the, but that would be the marketplace then would determine which would tell you which one is worth reading. Right. Because if your book isn't really a good book, and you, you know there are a lot of books out there that, I mean, I've read a few, and I'm like, well, you know, if they had done this or that, it right. might be better. And we've even had, I'm in the book club, so we've even had some people come in um, to talk to us about their book. Right. And um, just even offering them suggestions in terms of you do like a second publishing that maybe you might want to change a couple of things. And some people will take that very well, and then there are others who just don't want to hear it. So, um, you know, so even if there was, I guess, like, you know, I mean, opportunities for um, these um, authors to be in front of a traditional publisher, if you will, they would be the ones to be walking away mad because the publisher wouldn't want to publish their book. Okay. You're, you're, you're right, and that will actually be a complaint of many authors. Mm -hmm. But to, in today's environment, we're working in a space where there are n black books aren't being reviewed. There are no platforms with an audience that are reviewing books. Now, books are reviewed on Amazon, but everybody who's familiar with the book industry knows how that um, Amazon's rating system can be gamed. You can get your friends to review books or even buy the books and oh, review yeah, them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of gaming going on. And there's a lot of snapping, uh, sniping that goes on against your perceived competitors. Mm -hmm. um, so the idea of a, uh, a trusted entity reviewing books is gone. Right. Now, that is true. AOBC still reviews books, mm -hmm. but we don't review as nearly as many as, the, as we used to because we still pay writers to review the books and in an increasingly competitive environment. And my competition are essentially large corporations mm -hmm. um, struggling to get tra maintain and grow traffic. Um, there's, there's not very many resources left to pay a reviewer. And again, I just want to emphasize the importance of a bookseller in helping book clubs like yourself mm -hmm. identify the books uh, that are, are truly worth reading. Um, now, the role of the book club has actually become more important because they are essentially the, one of the few places where readers can learn about new books. Mm -hmm. So on my site, for example, I work with hundreds, almost 700 book clubs, looking at what they're reading finding out from them what books they enjoyed and sharing that information on the web. But um, as, 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 the, as Amazon puts increasing pressure on publishers uh, to make a profit, again, the, the ability to take a risk on an on a author, to market an author, pay for advertising, hire a publicist to go after the author, Though that that money has has essentially dried up. Yeah. And yeah. no, I was going to say, um, getting back to the to the role of the book club, um, I think that it, this is a time where book clubs can be extremely important um, with regards um, to books that they're reading. Now, um, all too often, you have you know book clubs they meet, they're read, talking about the books, but um, they may not report what their members are saying about a book. So, and if there was more of that going on, then it would say, okay, well, this is a book you should buy and forget this one. And maybe you might want to read this, but read it after you've read these others because, you know, it's good, but it's not as good as this one. You want to read that first. Yeah, no, I, I agree 100%. And in fact, I'm working with a number of book clubs mm -hmm. to do just that. 
uh, one important book club is uh, the Go On Girl book club. Who's Which we talked about. We actually, we did talk Go about that. <laughs> <laughs> I love that name. <laughs> they, they've been around for 25 years. Mm -hmm. But I also recently started working with another club um, called The T. Mm. And they're strictly web-based. Mm. And what they do is they read a book once a month and they produce a video around that book. Mm -hmm. um, and they go through a selection process and and they're helping to raise the profile of books, as, as you are with this program. Right. Uh, these platforms are, are, are really important, particularly today, because no one else is really talking about mm -hmm. books. When we look at, again, talking about Amazon's dominance, if no one is really reviewing black books, or very few people are, um, where do you go to determine which books are, are quality? So we talked about the Amazon review process. Mm -hmm. um, Authors have, you know, look often suggest that Amazon makes their books available um, to a wider audience. But um, you have to remember that World Wide Web is the widest audience. Exactly. And we can't limit ourselves to one platform because what you'll find is that Amazon will promote not the books that they think you would enjoy the most necessarily. What they promote are the books that will drive the most revenue, right, exactly. which is a very different thing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they're brilliant. They execute brilliantly. Well, they're it's that <laughs> algorithm that executes brilliantly. Well, someone had to write like that. that. Yeah, exactly. You know? Right, right. But if, you know. if we think about that algorithm, for example, not only, all right, so it's designed to maximize revenue, mm -hmm. okay? Now, if you happen to discover a book, a book that you enjoy, that's purely incidental. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that that algorithm does is determine how much you pay for that book. So when Amazon sells something on the web, they may sell something to you at a completely different price than they sell it to me. And that's algorithmically driven. Right. You know, it's, in the old days, we used to say, well, you know, if you were selling something, how much does that cost? Well, how much do you have? You know, how much you got? You know, it's, <laughs> it's a completely different uh, mentality. Mm -hmm. And as a result, if, if you're, if you're a, a bookseller on Main Street and you have to pay sales tax, which Amazon brilliantly has skirted in many states, uh, you don't have to pay sales tax. You have to pay a, a premium compared to Amazon for the books that you buy from the distributor. You um, have to pay for inventory and, and, and insurance and loss allowance and all these things that physical bookstores have to do that, you know, when you buy online that you don't. And another thing to keep in mind is as Amazon approaches a true monopoly, the pressure on them to discount books will completely evaporate. If they're the only game... Because they don't have any com com um, competition. If they have no right. competition, mm -hmm. they can charge whatever they want to charge. Right, exactly. Or you have no choice. So... As they get closer to that, I think so. In this, in this, in this scenario, w what I'm trying to do is help authors and readers understand, um, particularly in the black community, but this applies to the broader community as well. We have to take ownership of our literature. It's not just a matter of yes, making money from our own literature is important, mm -hmm. but it's a matter of controlling the narrative, controlling. Keeping our maintaining our own agency, so that we control what stories are heard. We determine which books are important. Uh, we control and manage um, the information that is, is is put out into the marketplace. Because if we allow an Amazon to do it, they will do it purely based upon revenue, and that has never ever served us. Well, you know what? I I'm I'm going to be a little bit of a contrarian. Please here. do. And that is that I don't think that Amazon will ever be a monopoly because it doesn't serve their interest to be one. Because with monopolies, now you invite government regulation. And I know they don't want to be, no company wants to be regulated by the government. But when you are in a, you know, a monopoly, that's what you invite. So that is the reason why I think like a Barnes & Noble, will still be around for a while because Amazon needs Barnes & Noble so that it's no longer, you know, it's not a monopoly, not yeah, no longer yeah, not I mean, a monopoly. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. But when you look at black books, 
they are effective. They are a monopoly. You know, I'm taking a survey now, mm -hmm. and third, a third of the respondents said, if, you know, I asked the question in the survey, would you boycott Amazon's bookstore in order to save the book industry? And a third said no. They would not do it because they enjoy the cheap prices, and we talked about why the prices are low. Mm -hmm. um, they would not do it because Amazon's provided a platform for them to sell books, and we already talked about there being other options and why Amazon's dominant. Um, and those are the two biggest reasons why people would not do it. it they're primarily selfish. You know, I've been at Amazon. I've sold books on behalf of, be, on behalf of Amazon as an affiliate since 2002. Mm -hmm. They've paid me consistently every period since then mm -hmm. uh, for selling their books. So if I was to boycott Amazon, I would lose a revenue stream. Mm -hmm. And But I feel that for the entire black book ecosystem. For the greater good. It's, it's absolutely important right. mm -hmm. that we at least consider it or look at it. Mm -hmm. So that what would that boycott look like? I mean, let's, let's say, for instance, okay. that um, you did a survey and it came back that 85% of the people are really upset with the way things are going on Amazon, and they're really willing to, to do something to make changes. Yeah. So what would that look like? It, that's, that's a good question. And, and with the response rate of just about two-thirds of these respondents, I'm, I feel it's enough to move forward with planning for it. Mm -hmm. So I can't say exactly what that will look like. Mm -hmm. um, initially, my gut says just a full-on stop using Amazon mm -hmm. bookstore. And I'm saying bookstore because to ask people to boycott Amazon, you know, if they have Prime memberships, or you know when they've paid you know for the free shipping and next day mm -hmm. uh, delivery. Yeah, because I'm a prime member. Yeah, I'm a prime member as well. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, to ask people to give that all up might be a little bit too much to to buy it up, to chew to to do. Um, but again, so if we're thinking about the black book ecosystem, I'm saying stop using Amazon altogether. In other words, if you are interested in supporting the black book ecosystem, and this is not just I'm not just going to approach uh, readers of black literature. This, I'm proposing that this um, reach out to anyone that really cares about the book industry. Mm. So sometimes I'll focus on the black book ecosystem, but it really applies to the, the broader book industry. industry. But you want to know something? Go. Quiet as it's kept, <laughs> there are probably a lot of um, quote unquote major mainstream companies that would be willing to back a boycott of Amazon across the board yeah. because they look at it as becoming just too big um, and it's going to bring down a lot of companies because of the fact that it's you know too big. I mean when you have companies like uh, for instance um, um, CVS and um, is looking to um, purchase um, Aetna you know, they're doing it as a way of protecting themselves from Amazon. <laughs> you know? yeah. I'm like, wow, you know. Because um, not just Walmart is, a, you know, concerned about Amazon, but you have CVS, a pharmacy that is, and they're more than a pharmacy, yeah. but um, yeah. they're looking at ways of protecting themselves against Amazon. Amazon is looking at into going to, uh, you know, uh, filling prescriptions. Mm -hmm. I mean, in a big way, so... Right multi-billion dollar industry and they're almost certainly will get into that business. Right. There are different regulations and things they have to deal with, mm -hmm. but it's a but space But they, they can deal with that. Yeah, yeah. So They but, have enough money. Yeah, so to, to answer your earlier question about what would it look like, I'm going to, of, of the people that responded affirmatively to the uh, question, I'm going to reach out to them and, and figure out what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. I do know that we need to address writers who are effectively all in with Amazon. So Amazon is a program where they want, they claim your electronic books, book rights exclusively. You know, so if you want to sell under these conditions, you can't sell, make your book available by any other platform. Um, it's not a long-term thing, but it's something that we need to think about in terms of writers. Um, we need to provide alternatives. So if a reader is looking for a particular book, we have to help them find that book. 
but it, it's not going, it's going to be a sacrifice. I mean, well, but you know what, you know, help me to understand why couldn't it be their own property? Why couldn't it be they have a website where you can buy their book through their website? That, I think that would be much more beneficial to anybody who's writing a book um, to have your website because you're going to still have to market the book anyway. Right. So whether it's on Amazon exclusively, whether it's on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, um, you know, Best right. Buy or whoever's selling books, um, and the Best Buy doesn't sell books, I, but but I'm just using that because sure. I know they sell music. Um, but if wherever they are, wherever it is, you know. Why not have it on your website? All right. So here's the. Ch All right. So building a website, and this is an interesting trend that I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. um, it's even though it's far easier to build a website now than it has ever, ever been, been. Trust me. The, it's it's <laughs> much more difficult to get people to visit your site. So an author, a new author, unknown, creates a website. No one's going to come visit that website. And indeed, no one's going to... But then how are they going to find it on Amazon? Okay, I'm a new author. Right. Nobody knows me from Eve, okay? And I have a book. It's in, on Amazon. I'm out and I'm marketing the book. Right. So how does that... Oh, they, I guess, well, they're going to trust Amazon more than they trust my website? No. I mean, you're buying... You want to buy my book. Yeah. And you're buying it here, but maybe you want a few more copies to give away to people... You can go to my website and get it. Right. Because so, I'm out here marketing it anyway. Right. So, you, and I shouldn't have said no one's going to visit your website. No one will visit your website simply because you created it. Oh, exactly. You have to, right. as you described, market the website. Figure out where your audience is. Figure out the best way to reach that audience. And it really will mean you need to spend money on advertising. Mm -hmm. So, even if it's on Amazon, if it's on my site... An author trying to reach an audience really today, in addition to S search engine optimization, perhaps some social media marketing, they really need to have a budget to advertise. You almost, you, it, it would be virtually impossible to rise above uh, the rest of the books that are out there without actually spending money on, on, on promotion, mm -hmm. doing some publicity. Um, if you have the resources, hiring a publicist to to get coverage on different platforms. Um, that's that has never changed. That's mm -hmm. that's always been the case. Right. Now now some 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 authors who are really aggressive, have the energy and time, can go out here in New York, there are authors who get on the subway yeah. and sell books. Exactly. Or stand on a street the corner, corner and, and sell, sell books. books. Or at but the shopping mall. You're getting in your car and there's somebody there, buy my book. You know? Right. Now For that's real. that's very difficult. Right. For anyone. But I do. salute them because what that says is that they believe in their product uh -huh. and they believe in it so much that they're going to get out there and market their, their right. product. And in fact, as you know, the number of black authors have started to contract, um, this is when authors with a platform, so some, some very popular authors, well, some very authors who've established a platform through aggressive more guerrilla marketing means were able to secure uh, contracts from mainstream publishers mm -hmm. because they had built this audience right. on their own. Right. Um, Just like the rappers back in the day. Yeah. Like Wu-Tang was selling their stuff out of the back of their car and then they got to deal with RCA. Yeah, so, and they're not the only ones that right. have done it that way. So. Right. So even that tactic is more difficult today. Mm -hmm. So a Zane, for example, who is far and away the best-selling author on my site, yeah. uh, a writer of erotica, um, she started on her own website. If she did that today, it wouldn't have happened. We wouldn't have heard of Zane. She wouldn't have made any right. movies. She wouldn't have been a multi-New York Times bestseller. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that, we've lost that. And we don't know how many of the Zanes that we have lost. We can't know. The loss is really incalculable. Right. We can't we can't figure it out because we don't know what we've missed. And for many readers, um, you know, I see it on the web. So for me, it's quite plain. Mm -hmm. I know that there are fewer websites focused on black books today. Full stop. Right. I've I've spoken to webmasters who've just simply told me they have given up. Mm -hmm. 
like you and I, we know we have to jump through all of Google hoops mm -hmm. in order to have a chance at making it on in search right. and right. being discovered that exactly. way. Exactly. And so unless you have a boatload of money for marketing, um, it would help to have some writing talent mm -hmm. too. You have a very small chance of making some real money selling the book. So while there are this many people selling books, there are this many people making, you know, selling a meaningful number of copies. And it's almost as if it, it's, it's one of the greatest myths that are out there in terms of authors being able to reach an audience. Again, just because you write the book does not mean that anyone is going to buy it. You have to invest in editing. You have to invest in, in publicity and, 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 and marketing and right. advertising. Do you have an audience for your book? Right. I mean, if you really want to reach a large audience, is there an audience for that right. book? Have you, have you thought about that? And, and then how are you going to reach that audience? Well, you know, someone said that um, the average independent you know, author really only sells about 200 books. That would probably be a relatively successful book depending on how the author is selling it. 200 books? Yeah, 200 books. <laughs> we, we hear wow. often about the um, wildly successful success stories, mm -hmm. and they're actually becoming far and few between. But anytime you see an author who sold a 1,000 books or, or more, there's someone who is actively, aggressively selling their book, and know what they're doing. Right, In other they're, words, they're right. And you know what? The other thing is, I know we're not, wasn't, this wasn't supposed to be like a marketing session. Sure, sure. But the one thing is that before you even sit down to write your book, you should really be thinking about your marketing plan. You know, who is the most likely person to buy this book, you know, and know everything about that person? Sure. And where do they hang out so that you can capitalize off of that, create a plan to go after that market? But what happens is that people write their book first, and then they're in a hurry to sell it, but they don't have a plan. Right. So no, I, I was just, just so I, I'm going to say this one uh, thing. So yeah. I think that if if you already have a marketing plan, you know who would be the most likely person to buy that book, uh -huh. and then you go and um, write the book, and you're marketing along the way while you're writing the book that you probably would be a lot more successful in selling the book, and you won't even need Amazon. You can have your own website and sell from your website. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry for that. The, um, what I, um, I would suspect that most authors pen, pen the, write the novel or book and without completely oblivious to yeah. um, the need or the necessity of a marketing, marketing plan. plan. Um, and so again, you have this many books, maybe this, this many have a marketing plan, mm -hmm. and, and, and maybe this many have the funds to execute on it. Mm -hmm. So the most common thing that I, I, I hear from authors is that, yeah, I, I basically spend everything on, on producing their book, and I have nothing left for marketing. And it's hard to help all of the authors that I encounter in this situation. I can afford as a webmaster, profit-driven website mm -hmm. to help a shrinkingly smaller number of those authors. And so as the number of other sites, as the number of sites become much smaller, the number of them become much smaller, the ability to help authors become much smaller. So even if you have um, a marketing plan and you have the ability to execute, and you, you do have the resources to spend on advertising, for example, where do you advertise? Um, you know, again, but your plan would tell you that. If you really take time to understand sure. who is the most likely person to buy your book right. and think about what that person is, you know, male, female, age, you know, things they like doing, where do they hang out, what do their friends do. Yes. That, and then you create a plan around that. Then you will understand and whether or not maybe you don't really need to spend a lot of money on advertising uh -huh. because you'll figure out ways of yeah. trying to, yeah. you know, reach that audience. Right. So, yeah, I guess what I was fixated on was the answer to your question mm -hmm. is the number of platforms that you have the ability to reach out on 
ha has been reduced. And the majority of those that are left are really a handful of sites. Well, you know what, actually, I'm not even thinking about in terms of fully the marketing plan being online. Right. I mean, I think True. people should have their own website where you can buy, um, people can buy your product from your website. But I think that if you really understand who your primary, you know, um, person who would buy that book, you would be able to figure out a plan to market to that person without necessarily spending a whole lot of money on advertising. True. And you probably wouldn't even have to do it. You wouldn't even need Amazon to do it. Um, that's what well, my that, thought. That, that's, and that's my I hope. I think people take, oh, I'll just put it on Amazon, and because they put it on Amazon, they think it's going to sell. Right. You know, oh, you can just get my book. Or it's a badge of honor. My book is on Amazon. Absolutely. So, and as a result, oh, okay, well, I'll, I'll look for it. You know, that kind of thing would, would be the response. Yeah. We're in... If you really know who your target market is, you really don't need Amazon. Right. Now, it, I wish... Because Amazon's <laughs> not, based on what you're saying, Amazon's yeah. not really helping anyway. Yeah, I wish every author out there was listening to what, what you just said. So, badge of honor. Mm -hmm. You know, there are many... Um, if you're targeting black readers, and this is what your, your audience is, there are still some sites out there, mine included, where you can reach that audience. However, I've been in this situation interviewing an author on film, mm -hmm. and I'll say, well, where can you buy your book? Oh, you can find my book on Amazon.com. And it's like, okay, I'm AOBC.com. I'm interviewing you, creating a video at my expense mm -hmm. to promote you and your work and your responses to Amazon. But I get it because... They're ingrained to think... Amazon, and I'm going to say this, and I know a lot of people out there are going to get mad at me, but unfortunately, sometimes, you know, um, as black people, we don't really think about the resources within our own communities that would be able to assist us to do what we need to do. Well, you, you, you said it. I mean, that, that's what it really boils down to. Right. So if I'm an author and I perceive that Amazon is my only option, then what I'm trying to do is help authors understand that they have other options. Right. And they and, do have other options. And again, I mentioned sacrifice. And in a sense, you know, if you think about the Montgomery bus boycott, mm -hmm. I'm talking the about real sacrifice. sacrifice. I don't think black people have the Constitution today in 2017 going into 2018. And if you see this, whatever year it is, <laughs> that they had, you know, with the Montgomery bus boycott. Yeah. They chose not to ride those buses for more than a year. Think about what that would take. They uh, had yeah. to figure out a plan to get to work absent of those buses. Right, right. And they knew why they were doing it. And they knew why they were doing it. And so that's... So the sacrifice... And I'm, it worked out for Right, them. so the sacrifice I'm proposing is not nearly... Really as great as that? No, no. And, and in fact, we all stand to benefit. Exactly. And I'll just say this, and it has okay. nothing to do with Amazon, but uh -huh. while we're on the topic of, like, boycotting, okay. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But, um, you know, just recently there was a whole social media storm over the fact that um, the way that um, Unilever the, the uh, manufacturer of Dove oh. um, marketed its product and people were so up in arms but I'm willing to bet you people are still going to go those same people, many of them not everybody, but many of them are still going to go buy Dove yeah. so I mean the outrage the outrage has to be beyond just you know posting something on Twitter or posting something on Facebook if you are outraged, then your pocketbook should show that you're outraged. Right, right. Because until that happens, no one's going to pay attention to you. Yeah, the the outrage often expressed on social media is just that, expressed on social media. Exactly. And, and that, I don't even pay attention to it because I know yeah. that the next time they go shopping, chances are they're going to pick up that Dove product anyway. Right. That that. And so even with the the whole Amazon thing, right? People are still are going to go and shop on Amazon. Right. So you, or you, buy books. I'm not saying they don't have to buy anything no, else, but in terms of black books, yeah. I mean, we should figure out ways in terms of how we can support black authors, black booksellers. 
and the whole black book ecosystem, the people who are out there helping the market, everything. Yeah, you know? yeah, and I, it's win, win, win. It, right. There's just no two ways about it. But going back to the the, the um, social media fueled, I call it fueled, outrage, that just enriches the owners of social media. Exactly. It, it, it does nothing to serve us as mm -hmm. a community. You and blow off steam, and they love it because it gets their chain. numbers up. It could chain, could chain, could chain. And, um, and then you just go back to business as usual. Right. I mean, what did you gain? Right. So, yeah, I have a... That's meaningful. No. And, and, and again, we can't use the tools of corporations to, you know, to benefit us. You know, it just... It, it never has ever worked that way. No. Um, but you know, going back to uh, boycotting, that's that is still a tool that can work. Now, if we never ever went back to Amazon again, Amazon wouldn't suffer, but we can still benefit. Exactly. And but I, I think when you, one of the challenges that we have is getting the word out. Mm -hmm. So, what platforms that are black owned? that would go out their way to help promote a boycott of this nature. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I'm afraid to say that there probably aren't very many. And the reason is because these platforms are under increasing pressure for you know, a myriad of ways, most of them having to do with corporate domination of media. Mm -hmm. um, they're not, this is not going to generate a lot of interest unless it's, they, have, they would have to invest resources to figure out a way to uh, frame this in a way that would be that would generate revenue in a sense. Mm -hmm. Now, in the broader community, there's quite a bit of discussion about the impact of Amazon. Oh yeah, I and, see it uh, all the time. Yeah, but just in our community, um, you're not going to read about this mm -hmm. necessarily on social media mm -hmm. because it's not going to drive engagement and eyeballs and mm -hmm. enrich those platforms. Um, so that's that's going to be a challenge. But again, I'll work with folks and figure out how to make this make it happen. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, um, just based on this conversation, I can see that there's um, some work that needs to be done. You know, because you know, in terms of how that boycott would look, right. you know, and how it's structured. You know, again, in terms of like we said, marketing. You know, how it gets marketed. So. Um, there may be people out there who might say, hmm, I'm not going to buy today, I'm not buying, you know, because you have people like that. Yeah. But, and, you know, for it to really take effect, it's going to really take some planning, sure. you know, um, yeah, agree. On, on your side. So, yeah. and so that, that, that'll be a challenge. And, and as you suggested, there are people who, who have replied saying, I'm already uh, boycotting mm -hmm. Amazon. I believe in independent uh, booksellers. And... You know, so they already have that. So we run the gamut from I'm already doing it mm -hmm. to uh, there's no way I'm going to give up the and you know the the and it, the forty percent off brand new hardcover books. You know, you can forget it. I'm mm -hmm. not doing it. Mm -hmm. So, but I, you know what? Um, I I don't mean to cut you off, no, no, but no, no, um, no. the thing that I always say is that whenever there is something new. Uh -huh. You know, you're going to have one third of the people who will be, oh, great idea, I'm with you. Right. And then you have another third that, well, well, I'll just see how it goes. And if it goes okay, then I'll be with you. Sure. All right. And then you'll have a third of the people who will right. never, ever be on board. Right. So I would never allow the people who are that one third that will never, ever you know, I, I can't give up that 40%. They're not going to be the ones that will make me determine what I'm going to do. Sure. You know, if you believe in something enough yeah. and you feel it's going to work and you have a, a, at least some people to help get it started, then I would just roll with it. Yeah, no, I... I really? Yeah, I, someone recently gave me that advice on my website and mm -hmm. uh, I agree with it in mm -hmm. the sense that um, I can invest a lot of energy trying to convince that third. Yeah, because they'll, they'll, you can never convince them. Heels are dug in. And in fact, I spent... Remember, there was a lot of people who stayed on the plantation. Sure, sure. You know, because you, you couldn't convince them that they could be free, okay? Yeah. And no, then there was those that left. Some of them, they were still, you know, mindset still left on the plantation. Right. You know, so... 
What can I say? I mean, that's not a hyperbolic analogy. I mean, mm -hmm. it sounds like it might be, but it really is true mm -hmm. in the sense that we allow ourselves to, in other words, the white culture, for some of us, we don't feel validated unless they Put give, a us, give, a, give us exactly. their stamp of approval. Right. And the stamp of approval from a, a black platform is meaningless. Right. Meaningless. Right. We, um, I mean, if, if you don't <laughs> go on another segue, um, I, um, r there is no um, black books, uh, bestsellers list focused on black uh, books other than the one I produce. Mm -hmm. None. And so now, so now I'm hearing this and basically for the first time. Sure. So I think what we, you know, this show's over. We need to sit down and figure out how do we promote that? Sure. You know, because I mean, that really is a great idea. Right. So from a reader perspective, the most popular content on my site tends to be the bestsellers list. Mm -hmm. And I would be happy to give that to you to put on what's the 411. Mm -hmm. um, because it's, it's, it's good content and people appreciate it. But my challenge, interestingly enough, is to get authors to, to say, hi, I'm a ALBC best-selling author. Right. Now, they will say, you know, for example, Essence, who's not black owned, used to produce a list. They haven't produced the list in years. But authors will still say they're Essence best-selling author, mm -hmm. or if they're fortunate enough to be a New York Times best-selling author, and I use right. that word fortunate in, right. uh, in, in quotes, they'll say that. They'll say, but they won't ever say, if there's, again, the only, and I've been producing this list since 1998, mm -hmm. um, how do I, you know, the, that's the challenge. Well, you know what, it's interesting, and I, and I understand that, because actually it took a long time for people to even say they were NAACP Image Award nominees. Sure, yeah. You know, um, as more awards, you know, um, you know, came along, or, or the fact that, you know, it was more prestigious to say that, well, they were Grammy-nominated or something of that effect. Um, and... Then there are people who started using it because if they were not Grammy nominated or were not Emmy nominated or an were, Academy Award, you know, nominations, sure. okay, well, we have to say you have some kind Something. of an award. Yeah. So now, okay, so the NAACP Image Award became an award that now they're proud of saying it because if they didn't have that, they wouldn't be able to say anything. Yeah. So. And today I see the. The profile of that award for authors has started, has, 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 has improved over time. In yeah. other words, I'm seeing more attention being paid to that, that award. And in fact, the NAACP, for the first time this year, uh, used AOBC.com as a platform to promote um, these award submissions. Mm -hmm. So I, I published a list of the awards on the site. I'm not aware of any other site that does that in such a substantive way as I do. Mm -hmm. In fact, the NAACP themselves don't do it um, because I have recognized that these awards, which are far and few between, mm -hmm. um, are important to acknowledge. And in fact, on the site, what I do is I compile a list of what I describe as the most critically acclaimed books. It looks at uh, the Ernest Gaines Award, the NAACP Image Award, the Phyllis Wheatley Awards, the Hurston Wright Awards. Wow. Um, the, it looks at book club reading lists. So mm -hmm. a, a prominent book club has selected the book. All of this goes into a calculus that determines this is a substantive book, this is worth reading, mm -hmm. because it's been given any combination of awards. So if... Um, without rely, you know, betraying my underlying formula, um, all of these books have at least won two, gotten two of these acknowledgments. So if you look at that list, and I've casted it going back as far as I can go, mm -hmm. and I'm maintaining it forward, going forward, you're going to find a good book. There's just, you can't get two of those things and not have a decent book. Mm -hmm. So these types of lists, that I'm compiling. So, you know, not getting too technical, I've built this humongous database of black books. And I'm 
uh, compiling a ton of information on these books. Uh, you know, and not just the black awards, but also black winners of Pulitzer Prizes, black winners of National Book Awards. Right. Um, even, if, even. Um, Which is coming up, by the way. Yeah, yeah. And um, so if you wanted to know who won a National Book Award that was black, I have all of those those books on the website. No one else has that. Right. Um, and then not it's just not on the site. It also feeds other information that's presented on the site. So um, going back to the, I think the first one was um, Richard Wright, mm -hmm. uh, 1950. And the other thing that you can do with the list is look at, well, how many years did it take the first black winner to win? It took approximately 50 years. Yeah, exactly. And then how much longer did it take for the next writer to win. Right. So the next 10 took, you know, another 30 odd years. Right. But that data is available and you, you can use right. it, you know, so over time as a compiler's information, mm -hmm. the site becomes a lot more valuable. Now, Amazon could do this tomorrow with their resources. Right, yeah, but definitely. They're, they're not going to do it. They, they haven't done it yet. Yeah. Right. They may do it and knock me out the box and Google will put them first on the, on the search engine mm -hmm. results and I'm dead. <laughs> You know, but yeah. but if we support our platforms, we won't be dependent upon Amazon. Right. We won't be dependent upon Google. Right. And right now we are. You know, I, I shared with you some information about my website's traffic. Mm -hmm. And um, back in 2011, my website traffic dropped 80 percent, full on, overnight. Right. A hundred visitors. A hundred visitors. 20 visitors mm -hmm. overnight and it took me five years to recover from that right many of my peers never recovered from that in fact they never knew what hit them mm -hmm. and it's so it we're, we're really operating in a, in a in a new world yeah i was gonna say it's an entirely entirely um you know different ecosystem yeah. yeah i'm just thinking about something that you said in terms of the list that you have and we have a number of and people who might even be watching this episode or even listening to it on the podcast because we talked enough it is going to be a podcast okay. <laughs> <laughs> but at any rate um there are people out there that are in college studying black literature sure you know some people are even you know getting master's degrees and even phds that may have something around related to um you know um, black literature and your your site basically could be of assistance to them you know because if i was writing a paper on you know the progression of um uh, black authors getting awards or something you know you've got the data there yeah, you know yeah. I mean so that could be helpful um, or any other subject and whatever the data is that if you have it it would be helpful to them so yeah yeah so that is the reason why you know we really need to support um, you know not just your you know your site and you but each other because you know we're all doing something where somebody might find that information useful. Right. So, no, I, I, and it would be a shame for it to go away because there's no other repository to, you know, that. Right. That. And we've lost too many websites right. already. already. Websites with terrific content um, that just were no longer sustainable for reasons that had nothing to do with the quality of the content. Exactly. But we everything are, to do with the algorithm. The, the, the algorithm, right. yes. The, so, <laughs> um, we're going to need to wrap up. Okay. Yeah. Um, and um, so, so let's, where do we go from here? I mean, because we talked about a lot. You know, we talked about, um, you know, Amazon and perhaps maybe the need to... Um, um, a boycott Amazon. People may boycott Amazon, but if they don't go and support, you know, sure, what you sure. want them to support and what they should be supporting, then what, what's the point? Yeah, I, I, yeah, that's so, why I need to listen to right. others right. and hear what, what they have to say because that's a good point. Right. So, um, so in addition to that, what, what else would you want, you know, um, people, you know, to know as we, you know, close out? Well, I think you you basically said it all in terms of supporting um, our own businesses. Mm -hmm. You know, an interesting thing that I noticed, for example, I was looking at the top 50 
black owned website. Mm -hmm. And I was really alarmed and actually hurt to find that not very many black owned websites that have a, a meaningful no amount of traffic. Mm -hmm. Now, um, so I'm just emphasizing the importance of supporting our own platforms. It, it, we have to. So if we don't, our only options will be Amazon. And again, if, if they are our only option, we will not only not be served at all, we, we will be adversely uh, served. It, right. it will hurt us. Right. Because uh, you know what, actually, um, we have no idea, because we're not in control of the web. I mean, Google really is in control of the web. And if we really don't, you know, support, um, you know, the black businesses that are online and, you know, going to their websites, and, and it's even hard to say, like, going to their websites because you you don't necessarily find them even when you're searching for them because it doesn't get served up. So you would have to know that they exist in order to go there. Um, but as these algorithms change, there's a there's a possibility that, you may not ever, ever see some of these websites because, I mean, you hardly see mine, you know. Well, um, you know, and because Google takes its time in terms of how it goes and indexes websites and therefore know that you're even out there and, you know, oh, yeah, okay, well, maybe we'll serve you up for this, you know. So um, I think, and I'm going to say myself included, I need to do a better job at, you know, promoting and marketing what we do. But, um, but when you do find um, out, out about or discover, um, you know, a site that you feel, wow, there's so much information here, then you need to keep going back and telling other people. Because at some point, if we don't do that, we have no idea in terms of how these al algorithms are going to change and therefore change whether you even get seen at all. Yeah, yeah. The, Give the, me on page 20. Sure. You know? the, the, mo the most striking thing about the list I did produce, of uh, the most surprising reaction was that from many people was that they never heard of most of the websites. Mm. So it's, 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 it's more than about support. It's actually patronage. Right. So if I sell books on the web, you should purchase the books through the website. Mm -hmm. I can, you know, I send people to a number of different websites. Right now, Amazon is far and away the most frequently way, the most frequent way people purchase books through my site. I can sell books directly. Unfortunately, people won't buy them from me directly. Right. So I, I take advantage of the other platforms. I also send people directly to the author's website. I also send people, to, you know, any, any way books can be sold. Right. So we have to take advantage of those other options. So if we do launch a boycott against Amazon's bookstore, I will drop all the Amazon links from my website, which will probably mean immediately I will lose that revenue stream. And not only and would you lose that revenue stream, you might even drop in Google rankings I, because I, of the <laughs> fact that the relationship with Amazon gives you, you know, domain authority as far as Google is concerned. Yeah. Who, who, look, I'm not above suggesting that I might draw the eye of Amazon and, and be precluded from doing any business with them in the future. Mm -hmm. I mean, Amazon is that powerful. Oh, yeah, exactly. Um, so it, it's, it's a, a risk, mm -hmm. and it's a, it's a real risk. Um, and so, and, and here's why, I guess, in, herein lies what I'm saying, is that maybe, you know, the language shouldn't necessarily be to boycott Amazon. The language might be, you know, here are, you know, sites that you should go to to yeah. purchase books by black authors. Yeah. All right. I hear what you're saying, but I, I think that if we aren't clear on what the problem is. Mm -hmm. So the problem is, is, and we could do both at the same time, yeah, but there can. are two problems. Can two problems. One is we need to patronize black-owned businesses. Exactly. If, if you believe in them and you think they need to su be supported. Mm -hmm. So it might mean that you need to pay a little bit more for the book mm -hmm. or wait a little bit longer to get it. But I think those two things are worth, and two-thirds of my audience thinks that's worth doing. And, and, and I do, too. I think um, it's absolutely right. Because and really, do you, well, I shouldn't say, I don't know about anybody's, I mean, I may say, order something and it's going to come the next day or the day after. It'd be nice, but I don't really need it that fast anyway. Right. No, I mean, it's a big deal to get 
a book delivered for free. Mm -hmm. Nothing's free. No, it's not. You're just not being charged for it right, right now. Right. And that's, but to get the book delivered without having to pay uh, for the shipping cost and having the book substantial. I live in Manhattan. If I order it in the morning, it'll be there in the evening. I mean, it's that's a big deal. Right. No, no one... Mm -hmm. No one can compete against that. Right. Not but you don't always need it at that evening. That's the point I'm saying. Yeah, so right. even though you're a prime, you know, customer and you live in Manhattan and they'll, they'll deliver to you the same day, you know, maybe three out of the ten things that you order, you need that same day. Maybe the other seven, if it took five days to get to you, would be okay. Yeah. So, but, but the point, I guess, really where I'm going with this is that we really need to think about things in those terms right, um, right because right. you know not all the time that we need something right away but at the end of the day you know for our own salvation you know we need to figure out a way in terms of how we could be supportive of more um you know black owned businesses yeah. you know because people will say oh well you know um we need to have more black owned businesses and we need to, but yeah, but when they're there, you need to support them because right. if you don't support them, they can't, you know, survive on ether. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, look, when I started, the website was nothing compared to what it is today. Mm -hmm. And I survive solely because, well, not solely, but I, much of my support is from the black community. Now, I, I just, indicated that I could use more support and mm -hmm. I can mm -hmm. and there's more support available to be there's more support available right. but there are people who support the site and if it wasn't for those folks this site would not exist um, it you know full stop end of story right. I don't survive because I'm covered in the media mm -hmm. all the Look, I survived but because be, of you, right, literally. But, right but you also took the time to go out there and market okay in a variety of different ways and maybe some of what you did wasn't really top of mind when you started but over time but you know um and that's one of the things and I, I stress that in this even note to self <laughs> that marketing 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 you know we have to market and um and i've been a little lax at that um myself um so that's why, you know, I can sit here and say that because I know I have, yeah. but um, we have to because if we don't, you know, it's not, we're not in the situation anymore. If you build it, people are going to come. Right. You have to let them know that you're here and why, you know, they need to come. There's something there that whatever it is that you're doing is going to solve a problem for them. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and you can't stop. Right. I mean, exactly. you... Speaking of Amazon, Amazon is the biggest advertiser on Google AdWords. Yes, it is. It is. And, 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 <laughs> and with that, yeah. you know, we're going to stop okay. <laughs> because we can pick this conversation up a little later um, because, you know, it's not something that's going to end with this because we'll be three weeks from now. We'll be, you know, yeah. visiting the same issue. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm looking, hopefully, next year mm -hmm. to to start something. Right. But we'll we'll see. I, you right. know, we'll see. Right. And maybe the narrative will change a little bit to reflect your sensibility. It depends on what everyone says. Sure. Okay. So I'm Ruth Morrison, and this is Troy Johnson. We thank you for watching, and if you're catching this on a podcast, we thank you for listening. And and please send us your suggestions. Um, you can always send us your, your suggestions um, for more topics and, you, you know, even things that we've said here today. Um, so with that, have a good day. Lifestyle.